Last year, Seth Bling hired me to program up some command block contraptions for him. And one of the command block contraptions I made was an instant replay system that I'm kind of showing off here. And basically what this instant replay system does is it records your movements and lets you play them back again. And so, for example, I can turn this on, and then I can, I can jump around, I can look up at the sky, I can look down at my shoes, I can walk around, and that will be recorded so that then I can go and play it back. I'll go ahead and summon a new zombie model wearing Seth Bling kind of armor, and I can do this, and it's going to go and play it back, and it's going to jump around, and it's going to look up the sky, and it's going to look down at his shoes, and then come back over here and turn the thing back off. So that's what the instant replay system does. And yeah, I'd ask Seth afterwards because a bunch of people asked me, how, hey, Brian, how did you code it up? Uh, if I could make a video just kind of like describing the internals. And Seth said that was fine. And the internals at the time, they're kind of overly complicated. They're over here and it was kind of a big mess. And I never got around to making a video kind of describing how it worked because it was just a little too complicated. But recently, they have added new command block features in the 1.9 snapshots and things have gotten much, much easier. So today I want to show off a video that explains how the instant replay system works. Somewhat amazingly, the entire replay system runs on less than a dozen commands. So let's get started. I could go poking inside each command block trying to show you the commands, but I think a more effective way to see what's going on is to see an overview of all of the commands that are in the system and then we will walk through the row of commands that records, the row of commands that sets up the playback, and the row of command that actually runs the playback. First up, recording the player's movements. The three commands here run in a loop, so long as the purple command is powered by redstone. The first command is a teleport that we'll come back to in a moment. The second one summons an armor stand with no gravity, which means it won't fall out of the sky, invisible so that we can't see it, and marker, which means that we can't interact with it. Then scoreboard players add, add at E time one, adds one to the time score of all entities, which includes both the armor stand that we just summer, summoned, as well as the player, that's me. So we both have a time score of one. Then the loop begins again. Teleport all entities with a time score of one to the player. In this case, the armor stand we just summoned will be teleported to my current location. And when you teleport an armor stand to a player's location, it gains the facing direction. So if I'm looking up at the sky, the armor stand will be looking up at the sky. If I've turned to the right, the armor stand will be turned to the right. As a result, the armor stand now has the position of the current player. Then we summon a fresh armor stand. And once again, add one to the time score of all entities. So my score and the original armor stand score increase to two, and the new armor stand we just did increases to one. Then the loop starts again. Teleport that most recent armor stand with a time score of one to the player, and so a new armor stand now goes to my new position. We summon a new armor stand, we add one to all the times once again, and so as I'm moving along, I gain a bigger and bigger time score, leaving behind a trail of armor stands that all have different scores, starting from one right behind me, getting bigger and bigger and bigger depending upon how much time I've been running around. Next up, preparing the playback. When I power the orange block at the top, that impulse block will cause these three other commands to run exactly once. The first command, scoreboard players operation at E type equals armor stand, time minus equals the player's time, says that we will subtract the player's time from all the armor stands. So if I had been running around recording myself for five seconds, there would have been a hundred armor stands behind me with time scores numbering from one to a hundred. After running this command, they'll all have 100 deducted from them, and we'll end up with time scores on the armor stand from negative 99 up to zero. Then kill any zombie. So if we had a zombie from the pre previous run of the playback, we'll go ahead and kill it. And then we'll summon a fresh zombie with no AI one, so that he doesn't walk around on his own volition, silent one, so we don't have to listen to him, and a bunch of armor items. I've cut off kind of the whole list that just gives him some armor that makes him look like Seth Bling. Now, finally, let's focus on running the playback. That is this loop right here. While the purple block is powered, these two commands will run over and over again in the loop. 
The first command teleports the zombie to the armor scan that has a time score of exactly zero. Then we add a time of one to every armor stand. Recall that after the setup operations, we ended up with negative scored armor stands from, for example, negative 99 up to zero. And so as we add one to each one, we will select a new armor stand, the next one in the line, to teleport the zombie to. And just as when I teleported a armor stand to myself, the armor stand gained facing direction, so it might be looking in a certain direction. When you teleport a zombie to that armor stand later, then the zombie will also be looking in that same direction. So to sum things up, we have a recording loop that leaves an armor stand behind 20 times a second wherever I've been standing. We then kind of rewind things by setting the time back in time to below zero, and then play back things forward, adding one to the time and repeatedly teleporting a zombie to the next armor stand. That's all there is to it. Let's show it off in action once more. I can activate the recording device and then walk around, jump around, look at the sky, look at the floor, whatever I want to do to record my actions. Then I'll turn off the recording device. I will rewind the tape, as it were, and summon a new Sethbling kind of model. And finally, I'll play it back. And it's going to jump around the same way I did, look up in the sky the same way I did, look down at the ground, just replaying the same actions that I just did. You can actually see all of the armor stands that were left behind if we go into game mode 3, spectator mode. You can see where I jumped around over here and then was looking up and down and walked back to turn the thing off. I came up with this idea of using invisible armor stands with the commands as the names of the armor stands in various colors so that you could actually see the commands from just flying around rather than having to right click on each individual command block. And I think it's pretty effective, but let me know what you think of it. The way that it works is actually over here. Uh, it manages to select which commands are going to be displayed based on just what selected item spot I have. And so I can actually show you, I'll just, I won't talk through the commands, but I'll just fly down here. It checks for all the various selected item spots uh, that I could be holding, uh, you know, when you use your little selection bar with the cursor on the bottom. And then anytime that changes, then it goes and does some other things over here that has armor stands that are on certain teams and has their names become visible and has the other teams become invisible. And so that's how I kind of like filter out the different commands that I want to show at any given period in time. So let me know what you think of that. I think that'll be useful for a variety of future command block tutorials. And yeah, I don't mind if other people kind of steal the idea as well, because I think it's a cool way to show off what's actually happening inside command blocks. I am the one and only Dr. Brian Lorgon 111. I hope as always that you guys are having a great day and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.